is because primes are fundamentally random. The distribution of primes through the integers, it follows a kind of logarithmic scale where there are less and less primes uh, as you as you go up the, the scale, right? Obviously, like in the first 10, there's like, what is it, six or seven primes. And in the first 100, there's like, I don't know, seven, I don't even know, 50 primes? I've got no idea. But then it gets smaller and smaller proportionately to the total as you go up. In other words, it curves upwards, but on a on a slower and slower rate, so a logarithmic scale. It is literally logarithmic, by the way. Um, that's something that uh, was proved by, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so what's my point? But the distribution, like where exactly those primes are, is is fundamentally random. And I, I state that as an assertion, but I believe, and, and a mathematician will correct me here, but I believe that that statement is intimately tied with what's sometimes called the Riemann hypothesis, which is like the most famous unsolved problem in mathematics. I think I'm right in saying that if that hypothesis is is correct, then the distribution of primes around this logarithmic scale is random. And everyone believes it is random. And, it, and the Riemann hypothesis is true, more or less, I think so. Uh, so what's my point? So my point is that because that's a fundamentally random distribution, it, you can't re you can certainly be smart in the way you search for prime factors. Uh, there are cleverer and less clever ways to do it, but you can't fundamentally break through to that sort of, um, make a real sort of breakthrough that will allow you to find them quickly. Does that make sense? Kind of? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that's right. That's so interesting. Um, but you say that there's a difference between small numbers and large numbers. Yeah. So yeah. You, but my my original point was that was that was that um, this is the, the 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 most obvious and the most important example because, like, say, two hundred, three hundred years ago, people knew this fact that it's difficult to um, factor a large number into into its prime factors. Um, they didn't care. Why would they care? Because the only numbers they could deal with were kind of human scale numbers, like numbers of five digits, six digits. I mean, you know, certain clever people could do clever calculations, but it was no, there's no practical application for having numbers so large that it would be impossibly hard to factor. So it's like a, it's almost like a phase transition, except it's not, it's not like a water to ice phase transition in, in, in the, it's not a, it's not a sudden transition, but or maybe it was a sudden transition in history because when computers came along, let's say in the early half of the 20th century, it suddenly became possible to deal with very large numbers, to actually use them in real calculations. And at that point, it was just a matter of time before certain people realized that this property that numbers have, that they're very difficult to break up if they're very large, like it's it's not an exponential growth. I mean, is it exponential? I don't know exactly how you scale it, but it's it's a huge increase in difficulty if you go from a four-digit number to a five-digit, ten-digit, or like in the case of RSA, you're talking about 300 digits in decimal representation. It, once you go to a very large scale of number, the, this process is not just correspondingly harder, but it's like exponentially harder. So instead of it taking... So if it, let's say it took you like uh, an hour to, to factor a six-digit number, uh, it wouldn't take you two hours to factor a, a 12 digit number, right? It was, it was like exponential. Um, again, I don't know the exact formulas or whatever. You get the general idea that once we've got these very large numbers, we've got things which asymmetrically, even given the same computing power to go backwards as we had to go forwards, um, we just, it's just no way in, in like the lifetime of the universe, et cetera, et cetera. We're not going to, we're not going to factor that, that number. Uh, it's, it's asymmetrical is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, and that's why, as we started being able to deal with very large numbers, because of the advent of computers, fast computation, let's just say, um, this whole new vista, this whole new field of of, uh, of possibilities opened up. And, and, and what they turned out to be most important for fundamentally is this um, this idea of like m sort of military grade defense, or better than military grade defense, in the sense that uh, you're able to prevent people unlocking things that you've locked mathematically in a way that you couldn't do with an army or a, a gun, right? Or a safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's so fascinating, right? That that you have some ciphertext, and mm. regardless how much computational power is being thrown at it, the probability of it being broken is just diminishingly small, right? Negligible. Mm. But I mean, the, the interesting point there is that even before we had this phase transition into, into 
effectively I'm talking about public key cryptography. Even in secret key cryptography, we already had um, methods to create ciphertext which is unbreakable, not only by a fast computer, but by any computer at all. Okay, so if we consider the example of the one-time pad, or it doesn't really matter if you call it that or not. It's just basically secret key encryption where you XOR the data with a key or you add the data to a key modulo or something or whatever. It doesn't matter. There's a sim very simple operation, which means that the ciphertext created is uh, indistinguishable from random, as long as the original key was random. Um, and it's very interesting that even though that's like computationally, or let's say theoretically much better than public key uh, crypto uh, public key encryption uh, it almost immediately got ditched as a method as soon as public key well at least at scale anyway well, once we had public key encryption we used that and not this previous method which is uh, theoretically better because it it resists any level of computational attack and the reason is because um, this previous method uh, required key material to be to be shared, and there are other problems with it as well. But basically, the the fact that key material had to be shared was was uh, was not not very practical. So it was only restricted to like military usage, as far as I understand. 